There are a ton of iPhone custom home screen videos on YouTube, but I think you'll find this one takes a little bit of a different approach by prioritizing function over form, all while keeping a clean and minimal look. While I do tend to love the look of the custom app face iPhone home screens that are integrated into a custom iPhone background, it's not really a feature of an iPhone. It's more of a workaround that seems to break every time that there's a big update. And for me personally, I hate the hassle of having to keep up with all of the latest workarounds every time that there's a new update just so that my home screen is functional. So in this video, I'd like to share with you how I set up my home screen to accomplish two things. Keep it simple and minimal and maximize my productivity even if I'm just scrolling through TikTok. <clears throat> Let me jump in really quick and mention that not every part of this video is gonna be interesting to everyone. So I'm just gonna briefly explain the structure of this video, giving you the opportunity to jump around uh, to different parts of the video and just find the part that you are most interested in. First, I'm gonna jump into what I mean by increasing productivity with your home screen and really dive into what that means within the context of a home screen. After that, I'm going to show two different home screen options that I've designed and explain what thought process went into them. These sections are gonna be uncut and we'll just show off two of the latest home screens in action. So if you just want your home screen to look dope and still be pretty functional, go ahead and skip over to this section of the video, this time code right here. If all that made sense and you guys are ready to go, let's dive right in. So first up, let's go into what exactly I mean by increasing productivity just by changing up your home screen. On average in the United States, we pick up our phones between 100 and 150 times per day. For me personally, it varies by what day it is with definitely a lot more usage on the weekends, but I am right around the 100 to 120 mark on basically every single day. For all of those pickups, I imagine that everyone would be using tons and tons of apps every single day. But in reality, everyone only uses an average of 10 apps per day and only a total of 30 different apps for the whole month on average. This was pretty shocking to me. I had to jump into my screen time and double check that that was actually a real thing. And sure enough, I matched up to the average pretty close. Naturally, as someone who enjoys optimizing different processes and systems in their life, I started tinkering around with my homepage, trying to reduce friction on my phone usage experience. You know, frictionless. Based on the premise that if I can cut out even just one second per pickup of my phone, I could save a significant amount of time over the aggregate. More time to waste scrolling through Instagram all day, getting depressed, looking at everyone's perfect little lives. <clears throat> With some quick maths, I came up that on average, a person picks up their phone 35,000 times per year. And I estimated that about half of those pickups are probably from a notification from a text message or an email where the notification pops up and it's an immediate quick user experience with no friction, so, you know, frictionless. But on those other half, those other 17,500 pickups, I think there could be a lot of potential to save a significant amount of time. If we could save just one second on only half of the pickups for our entire year, we could save up to six hours in our year. Well, I know that six hours is kind of like whatever in the scale of a year. It could be six more hours that I could be losing in Rocket League. <laughs> so that's all good and nice and sounds great, but how do you actually accomplish this by designing your home screen. Well, I've got a little system where I use the built-in screen time app on my phone, and I take into account the total amount of pickups and total amount of usage from all of my apps, and I pick out the 12 most used and most picked up app, and I align these on my home screen based on the closest and most used app closest to my thumb and the least used within my top 12 uh, farthest away from my thumb. While strategically laying out all these apps, just based on the data, I think it is important to also put, a, put this through a filter of just real world use and take into account, like maybe you didn't use this app this week because uh, you were out of town or you were using a different device or something. I'm sure you guys all know the apps that you use the most and the apps that you wanna use the most. So just take that into account and include some apps in your home screen maybe that aren't on the top 12 of your pickups or most used, but you know that you're gonna use a lot moving forward. This can really be so valuable because so many people, including myself previously, would base their whole home screen just on the apps that they thought they used the most, or the apps that they wanted to use the most. But not anymore, 
we are now super data driven on our home screens. So yeah, that is the basics of how aligning your home screen can save you a little bit of time and make you more productive or less productive depending on how you use that added time that you're gonna get back. But yeah, now let's jump into my current two home screens that I have been bouncing back and forth between. And I'll show you guys exactly how I designed them, what went into that, and how you can design it for yourself. Okay, first up, let's check this layout on my iPhone. Now with this version, I keep all of my apps in a row on the right side and I have three widgets on the left. Now, it's important to note that I'm using the iPhone 13 mini. It's very easy for me to reach the top of my screen, this top right corner with my thumb without really changing my hand orientation or changing the grip that I have on my phone. If you have the iPhone 13 Pro Max or one of the bigger screen models or smaller hands, important to note that this layout probably will not work for you and you might want to choose the second layout that we're gonna go over in a second. But with this layout, you can see that I have utilized the strategy that we talked about with the screen time stats. On my home row, I've got the apps that I use and pick up the most, along with one or two apps here that we're not at the top of the list, but using some real world context, I identified that I wanted them uh, on my home row screen uh, anyways. And like I said, in the bottom right corner, above home row, uh, you can see that I've got my most open apps. And then going up that right column, in descending order, I've got the apps that I open slightly less. In the left column of my home screen, I have got three widgets. I use the batteries widget, the uh, weather widget as well as the uh, fitness or activity widget that keeps track of your steps and movement. Obviously these can be interchanged for any widgets that you like. I know that some people like to use different weather widgets um, or have their Gmail or notes app uh, as a widget on their home screen. And this is kind of where you get to be creative and choose what works best for you. And then let's go over my second home screen that I've actually been using uh, as of late. This is a little bit different of a layout. This layout uh, could be very useful if you have a, either a much larger phone screen like the iPhone 13 Pro Max, or if you have smaller hands and have the standard iPhone. Or even if you have the iPhone 13 mini, like myself, I still think it is super useful to just use this type of layout. As you can see, we've got the same home row here, but we're only using two bottom rows of apps with a blank space in the middle here, followed by two widgets, the weather and the batteries widget in the top uh, two rows there. Now this is a much more minimalist layout and home screen that I have been using. And I actually like this one a lot more than the previous one. In the first example, we were able to hold 16 apps on our home screen. With this one, you only get 12, but I think 12 is like a really great number. As we talked about earlier, the average person only uses 10 apps per day. And I have found that rotating out this home screen with the apps that I use the most has been the best user experience for me. And again, obviously you can swap out the widgets for whatever you like. And I think one important note to make is that this is really, your home screen can really be living and always changing and always updating. Throughout the year and throughout your life, you're gonna be using different apps in different scenarios and different situations. And if you really wanna take it a step further, you could even set different home screens for different focus states, which was introduced in iOS 15. I have tried doing that, but having it on a set schedule just doesn't really work out as well for me because I have such a flux schedule. Um, so I prefer keeping it just as one home screen that I can swap out uh, at my leisure. But yeah, that is how I organize my home screen to keep it nice and minimal and also increase productivity. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. But that is me. I will catch you guys next time. Peace.